Euler's method is a numerical method. So we're getting to see several different examples today. We, we solve differential equations by inspection, which really is an analytical method. We've done slope fields, which produce graphs or graphical attempts at solutions. And Euler's method provides numerical approximations to differential equations. Sometimes we're only interested in numerical values anyways. Sometimes we can't find an analytical solution very clearly. And in those situations, Euler's method is, is perfect. And in fact, Euler's method brings us back to some material we saw in chapter 4. Euler's method is really based on the idea of local linearity of differentiable functions. Recall that we used linearization in chapter 4 to approximate the values of functions. Euler's method does something very similar. We're going to use the fact that on small scales, curves look more and more like straight lines. The smaller the, the, smaller the interval we look at, we're going to use the fact that, that these functions act linearly on small scales to help us come up with, with numerical solutions. So in order to approach this problem, what I would like to do is I would like to think about the fact that dy dx is roughly like the change in y over the change in x. This is particularly true for small intervals. Right? This is particularly true for small intervals. This is only in a, in a, an approximation because they're not always going to be equal. Depends on the size of your, of your delta x. And we know that this is the slope, that delta y over delta x gives the slope. So the way we're going to approach this problem is to think about delta y as the difference between the old and the new y values. And we're going to think of the slope here as the, as the derivative, as our differential equation dy dx. So we can express this then as y nu minus y old, the change in y values for our function are simply going to be the slope, which is given by the differential equation, times the change in x. Or if we are interested, we can determine what the new y value is by taking the slope dy dx times delta x plus the old value. And this is, in essence, what we're going to do. This is our this is our, our formula that we will use to apply Euler's method. And if you think about this, this is very similar to a formula that we should already be very familiar with. That is the formula for the equation of a line in, in point-slope form. So this is our, our point-slope form, and you can see the parallels here. You can see where the slope is. That's simply the derivative of our expression. You can see where the change in x is, right? This, this difference in x here becomes our delta x. And, and so we can make the parallel here. What we're doing is we're, we're going from the derivative, right? We started with the derivative. We started with the derivative up here, and we turned it into a linear approximation. And the linear approximation now allows us to use Euler's method to, to construct numerical solutions. And in fact, I want to take a look at the numerical solution for this graph that we, that we produced with our, with our slope field here just, to, just a moment ago. I'd like us to, to think about the numerical solutions here. And in order for us to do this, what we need to do is, is choose a starting value. I'm going to choose a starting value here that is the point 1, comma, 2. This will be our starting value. And I'm going to choose a delta x. I'm going to choose a, a change in our x values as we go from one point to another of 0 0.1. What this does is this, this value here will affect our accuracy. Recall that we're 
we're taking a linear approximation of a curve and in doing that if we if we make our our steps too large what we're going to find is that we end up having a um, a, a very bad approximation of of this expression so we're going to start with the point 1 2 we know the slope of our function dy dx is the y value divided by the x value and we're going to let the change in x values be simply one one tenth. So the formula then that we're going to use to generate successive y values. So what we're looking to do now is we're looking to generate a table of x and y values. This is the numerical approximation to the solution of this differential equation. We're starting with x equals one and we're simply increasing that by 0.1 every time. That's our delta x. So our delta x is giving us information about where where the next x value is that we're using here. Recall that our equation that we're looking at is that our y nu will be equal to dy dx times delta x plus our old y value. dy dx we have right here. dy dx is just y over x. Delta x is simply 0.1 and now we are now we are ready to proceed this will allow us to to get excuse me there we go this will allow us to gain new y values from our old y values well we know that our initial y value here is 2 our initial value so in many ways this resembles an initial value problem instead of the general solution set that we get with the slope fields, we end up with Euler's method only being able to come up with one particular solution because we need that initial value to, to sort of start the iterative process of, of looking at things here. So let's go through and, and find a few values here until you get a sense for how this works. So y nu, if we look for, if we look now for the y value that's going to go here, this is going to be our y nu. Our y nu will be our old y value of 2 divided by our x value which is 1.1 all of this will be times our delta x and we will increase this by our old y value so this is now a formula that tells us what the what the approximate y value will be of this particular solution when x is 1.1 so you can get out your calculator now this is a good set of problems to do with the calculator we will have two times 0.1 divided by 1.1 plus 2 will give us approximately 2.1818. So this shows us how the function is changing as we go from x to y values. What we're really doing is we're solving this differential equation and ending up with a set of points. We're ending up with a, with a somewhat numerical solution. If we try our next value here, if we, if we go to determine what the next y value will be. Our y nu now will be our old y value of 2.1818 divided by our x value here which will be 1.2 times delta x and then plus our old y value of 2.1818. And working through the values there we find that we have a value of approximately 2.3636 so not a significant not a significant difference here in things. We're moving very slowly through through work. Why don't you take a moment and practice for yourself determining what the value for 1.3 will be. Okay, well hopefully you have gone through and taken a moment to look at, at these particular problems. Um, you should have found that the y value for x equals 1.3 is approximately 2.5454 and for 1.4 the approximate value is 2.7272. Now if we wanted to we could con continue this on farther and farther this iterative process of working out what the what the values are um, over and over again. We could choose a different delta x if we wanted to get a, a bigger general picture with less accuracy or if we wanted to get a smaller picture with with greater accuracy but Euler's method allows us to quickly and rather easily gain a sense for what the function is doing for a particular value of, of starting value, so our initial value problem here. All three of these 
are, are important tools and things that you need to be comfortable with um, as, as ways for us to determine what the actual values of functions are uh, when we're given information about their derivatives. So the assignment you will be given tomorrow in class will be the following. Uh, you're welcome to go ahead and get started with it or bring questions to class that you may have.